I keep finding myself coming back to this fleet shot from the Empire Strikes Back. There are just so many fascinating ships that have been all but lost to history. I've highlighted a number of these ships through a process that blends both restoration and creative reinterpretation, but I've never done a video on this little vessel. In reality, this ship would seem to be merely one of the pods snipped from the ship that I've called the Rebel Tanker. Rather than motion control miniature photography, many of the ships in the background here are photographs of miniatures that could be easily duplicated and snipped apart to quickly flesh out an entire fleet. They were all shot simultaneously against a blue screen and composited behind the motion control miniature photography of the final scene. The result, however, is that the background ships don't have the correct perspective shift, and by the end of the shot, they look like they're flying sideways. But it would seem that the original intent was that all these ships are facing left rather than more forward toward the viewer, so I've chosen to interpret the pod as though we were seeing it going left. Now, this pod is pretty obviously photo bashed from the tanker ship, but it didn't really make sense to me that in universe it had to be a part of the tanker. Now, there are a lot of ways you could go here, but the long and short of it is I'd simply prefer that it was a unique ship. So admittedly, this is essentially a completely fan-made design merely based on this shape and not a proper forensic reconstruction of the real miniature. But even so, I did try to keep the shape and proportions as faithful as possible. I'm calling this ship a Corellian tractor transport. I imagine that this rugged industrial vessel was designed with total modularity in mind, making it the perfect ship for a wide variety of different purposes and making it attractive to organizations like the Alliance to Restore the Republic, which required multi-role starships that could be easily outfitted to military specifications. The most popular configuration consisted of a tractor unit and a single forward module. This could be a multi-role module suitable for carrying a respectable load of both passengers and cargo, or it could be a module completely dedicated to either passengers or cargo, or really anything you can think of. I imagine that the Corellian Engineering Corporation offered an impressive array of customizable options for these modules, and third-party companies would increase the lineup even further. Even starships with no affiliation to the Corellian Engineering Corporation at all, like Coenser Medium Haulers, were purposely designed to be compatible with this modular system. And while pushing only one module gave the tractor transport a very strong ratio of thrust performance to utility, the powerful engines of the tractor unit were capable of pushing much more, meaning that a variety of intermediate immediate modules were also available, affording the ship even more customization options, though spacers mostly took advantage of this with freight modules that allowed the tractor transport to push a surprising amount of cargo. The tractor transport was controlled from a dorsal cockpit module, which gave the pilot a commanding view of the ship's cargo and also functioned as a vantage point for directing planet-side operations like the unloading and loading of cargo. The story that I've come up with for this particular Corellian tractor transport is that it was officially registered as the R-77077, but was known to friends and allies as the Cyclops 7. While the Cyclops 7 looked externally like a fairly standard tractor transport, the ship actually served as the mobile base for a small rebel operation that originated on the planet Tarara. The leader of this group was Captain Shua, who was distantly related to the King of Tarara, at least distantly enough to avoid the direct scrutiny of the Galactic Empire. Shua's family, no strangers to the moderate wealth that came with distant relation to the throne, operated several simultaneous businesses, one of them being a respectable though somewhat small-scale freight company. Shua commanded one of the dozen or so tractor transports that formed the backbone of the company and found himself increasingly frustrated with the regulations, stiff penalties, and consequential paranoia that came with doing business with the expanding empire. Captain Shua traveled widely enough to recognize that the empire had a tendency of absorbing or forcibly conquering any supposedly sovereign powers that they pleased. And with this growing pressure on Tararan space, it was clear to Captain Shua that if the empire was not opposed, the Tararan way of life would disappear forever. To save his planet, Shua would secretly modify his ship, the Cyclops 7, into something capable of fighting the empire. Consequently, much of the living space aboard the Cyclops 7 tractor unit was converted into a robust command center. Here, the crew could fire remotely controlled weapons, operate hidden reconnaissance equipment, and engage in long-range communications with a sizable network of fellow freight crews across the galaxy who had also taken up subversive activities against the Empire. Long before they would formally join the Alliance, Captain Shua and his crew of the Cyclops 7 maintained appearances as one of their company's many faceless cargo vessels. This proved to be an 
an effective front to inconspicuously operate within Imperial space. Landing on planets largely ignored, they could essentially park a capable fighting force directly on the doorstep of Imperial facilities and infrastructure. While conducting legal business on one hand, they could strike Imperial facilities with the other and then disappear immediately afterward. Amid the hustle of daily ship traffic, a single tractor transport rarely drew attention to itself, and through clever scheduling and carefully crafted plausible deniability, the crew of the Cyclops 7 almost never drew suspicion. Even the executives of their own company barely noticed the anomalous behavior, giving Captain Shua and his crew a remarkable level of cover. After several years of successful raids, these brave fighters were eventually contacted by Alliance Command through their secret freight network. From here, a formal relationship with the Alliance was born. The crew would continue to operate under their ostensibly legal cargo activities, but would also begin to smuggle less than legal Alliance cargo. Furthermore, they would use their connections and convincing front to transport covert Alliance personnel deep into Imperial space. Now that the Cyclops was routinely transporting important passengers and the occasional fully outfitted strike team, they added passenger accommodations to their previously cargo-focused forward module, while still preserving a large open space and lower cargo deck. Ultimately, the ship was still spacious enough to house fairly heavy equipment and even some small combat vehicles like speeder bikes and cannon sleds. The true operations of the Cyclops were unknown even to most in the Alliance, who simply considered it one of dozens of small cargo vessels that offered material support. This double-blind anonymity, as well as some institutional protection from their family connections on Terrara, ensured that the Cyclops 7 stayed several steps ahead of the Empire through the entirety of the war, and afforded it a level of access to Imperial space that was impossible for most Alliance vessels. When spotted at Rendezvous Point Gamma 9, the Cyclops had just returned from a reconnaissance mission on the planet Imdar, and only stayed with the fleet for a short period before departing with Alliance agents for another classified mission. I used to think that I was actually running out of mystery ships to discover in the original trilogy, but the more I study these films, the more I notice. There is just so much there, it's mind-boggling. I really want to keep shining a light on these ships and bringing them to life for you guys, and the best way to help me to do that is to support me on Patreon. A video like this on even the most simple mystery ship is a big undertaking that requires weeks of work, and every little bit of support makes it that much easier to continue making these videos. But Regardless, I'm just glad that you're here and that you stayed to the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.